With coverage you can count on, this is LEX 18 News at 6. Could treasures from centuries ago still be hidden here in the bluegrass? The tale of Jonathan Swift's hidden silver mines is rooted in history, but people are still searching today. Jeff Allen unlocks the legend in Mystery Monday. There are people out there who have spent their whole lives looking for this. James Scott is one of them. Well, I've been at it for a good many years, and uh, I'm not giving up now. I think we're close, real close. Legend has it an Englishman, Jonathan Swift, abandoned a treasure in the bluegrass. In a journal left behind, Swift says he came to Kentucky before Daniel Boone on mining expeditions and stumbled on silver in a cave. For the next nine years, Swift supposedly returned over and over to the site, carrying out silver bars and minted coins. But after Indian attacks, a mutiny by his crew, and blindness, Swift was unable to locate a large part of his treasure hidden in various locations. But I found several things that uh, led me to believe it's, it's in the area. Scott lives near Prestonsburg in Floyd County. This is video of him on his many treasure hunts over the years. He believes he's hot on the trail. Swift always told of a standing rock used as a marker. So this, apparently, I believe this is the rock right here. They used that as a marker to location for his mind and the money. Scott pulled the rock from its original location years ago. I was tickled deaf to find it. But if you ask him exactly where it was. No, I don't want it just go, you know, just give it away, you know, let, uh, you know, give the location up. No, not me. You know, we're still looking on this. Many believe this silver is locked away somewhere near Natural Bridge. Well, legend has it that one of Swift's silver mines was located right here on the site where the Wolf County Courthouse stands today. Casey Crum has traced parts of the legend to the Ashland area. And you start researching, you know, it kind of grabs a hold of you. At just 29, Crum has already spent years tracking down clues. But like most who search, it's more about the mystery than the money. I don't expect to walk out in the woods and stumble upon, you know, a big hoard of silver. If there's any there, you know, we'll get it. But uh, that's, that's not what it's all about. It's, it's the legend itself to prove it. But for now, I kind of hope that it will never be found just so people can keep looking for it. Those who search will have to revel in the hunt for what may lie beneath. Jeff no, Allen. Yeah, no, uh, no mystery to our weather today. No. Pretty crummy. <laughs> Phil's got more about that and when this stuff gets out of here next in your Storm Tracker forecast. Now, Chief Meteorologist Bill Meck and LEX 18 Storm Tracker weather. Rain again. More of it coming later tonight into the day tomorrow. Some of the rain tomorrow could come in the form of thunderstorms that may be strong or even severe. We'll keep an eye on that. Before that happens, well, let's take a look at Max Track Live Doppler. What we've got going on for you now is fairly quiet. We've just it's a little scattering of showers. There's a front essentially cutting across the area, uh, running just about parallel to I-64 in the east and then going down the Bluegrass Parkway to the west. Right now we've got a little light rain mostly east of I-75. Again, it's just a few little showers here and there. So we'll keep it generally cloudy through the evening. A stray shower can't be ruled out. Temperatures also staying pretty mild. More of a general rain around tomorrow morning. It turns into a little bit of a low midday and then tomorrow afternoon later in the day, tomorrow evening, we could see some heavier showers and storms arrive. So we could even squeak out a little sunshine middle of the day tomorrow, maybe a little. This is rainfall since it all began. We're talking about rainfall amounts that were a half to almost an inch. And with the rain that we have seen in Lexington, that now puts us just shy of number 10 on the all time wettest years that we've recorded in Lexington. We will blow by that by the time we're talking this time tomorrow. Uh, we could actually, by the time this is all wrapped up, be about number five or six or seven the way things are uh, shaping up at this point. Because when you look at the rainfall projections and a lot of computer modeling is all in this same category, inch and a half, maybe a little bit more as a general amount. And you get some heavier amounts near the thunderstorms that will be developing as well. So again, the water potential really is pretty high.
The next system is gathering down here to the southwest. Here's our rain that came through earlier today, more in southern Kentucky than north. This thing is gathering strength. It's got a lot of oomph to it. You can see also a line developing out from the main batch of rain out into northern Mississippi. That's the next little warm front that's going to branch northward. But right now, that front is just kind of cutting across the area. As we go then from, well, 2 o'clock in the morning, the low continues to gather, turns this into a warm front tomorrow morning, a pretty good rain covering maybe the north half of the area. There's your low middle of the day. Then we get you into the afternoon. Here comes the cold front, and it's a pretty strong one. That'll sweep on through the possibility of strong or severe storms during the latter part of the afternoon and tomorrow evening. Then that sweeps out. That comes in then for your Wednesday. And by the time we get you to Thanksgiving Day Thursday, things are looking pretty good for us. The moment we're at 60 in Lexington, right around 60 most places, all in northern Kentucky, is only in the upper 40s as we go through the 6 o'clock hour from our weather bug network. Look, Boonville's at 61, but Mount Olive, it's only at 53. So it gives you an idea of the swing going across the area. Our weather bug camera from St. Joseph Health System. We've had some rain come through Lexington again over the last hour, and we're at 60 after a high today that made 63. But tomorrow, we could actually push 70. Say hello to a nice warm day before the colder air comes back once again. Bill's Weather 101. We head to Monticello today, and those, oh, those were the kids at Bell Elementary. Sorry, gang. Come back at 7 o'clock. <laughs> Mainly cloudy. Rain will be returning for you. Temperatures in the mid 50s. Those kids at Bell Elementary and Monticello were terrific. And again, we'll have that video at 7. 70 tomorrow. Periods of rain, some stronger thunderstorms are possible later in the day. Uh, mid 50s, though, on Wednesday. That as the rain ends early. Thanksgiving Day looks terrific. By the time we get to Friday, well, the sun's out on Black Friday, low 60s. Rain possibilities late in the day on Saturday. And you are seeing the graphic correctly Monday and Tuesday. At least it's a possibility of. I think you're all too happy to put that snow on there. No, that's crazy. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Right. Thank you, Bill. The Cats stay number two in the polls, but apparently no one thinks they should be number one. And with the bowl streak over at Kentucky, is Joker starting to feel the pressure? LEX 18 Sports is next. Latest top 25 poll, but come on. They were the only team in the top four not to get a first place vote. North Carolina stays number one with 62 of the 65 votes. Syracuse and UConn got the three remaining votes. Cats stay at number two. Now, to be fair, they did get one number one vote in the coaches poll. Louisville moves up to number seven, meanwhile, and Florida rounds out the top 10. Other SEC schools in the top 25. Five and 0 Alabama is number 13. Vandy is 18th and Mississippi State enters the poll at number 24. The two future SEC schools, Missouri and Texas A&M, are also in the top 25. It's Tennessee week. It's also a day where Danny Trevathan was finally honored. Alan Cutler has more on Danny and the pressure that Joker is feeling. In a sports society where we use the word great way too much, Danny Trevathan is truly a great player. For the third time in four games, he had a career high 17 tackles and is the co-Southeastern Conference Defensive Player of the Week. How Danny isn't one of 12 for the Butkus Award given to the best linebacker in America is awful. He's third nationally in tackles. Joker, of course, thinks Danny belongs in the final group. But right now, my opinion is not winning much. The attempt on comedy often has some reality. Joker is saying that he knows with the record of his team, his opinion isn't strong or respected in a lot of circles. To the streak. 1984 was the last time Kentucky beat Tennessee. It becomes a topic of conversation every year when Rocky Top is next on the schedule. I'm not going to talk about the streak. I'm I, I'm I'll talk about the goal of ours to, to win our last game. When you're talking UK football and you go to sites like our True Blue Fan Facebook site, the big debate is not, will Kentucky beat Tennessee, but should Joker stay or should he be fired? Weeks ago, as you know, UK came out and said that Joker will coach next year. Has it changed? I don't have I don't have a clue. You know, I'm thinking like I say I'm focusing on this this game, this this goal that we still have out there. Beat Rocky Top and the healing for Joker with True Blue fans takes a big step forward. Alan Cutler, LEX 18 Sports. Max Smith, meanwhile, is still nursing a sprained shoulder. Joker said he was better yesterday and better still today, but he is still day to day. Joker said if Max can't go, Morgan Newton will start. Joker doesn't expect that will happen. He thinks Max will be ready. Kentucky's Bria Goss was named the SEC Freshman of the Week. In three wins last week, Goss averaged 11 points, five rebounds, and three assists. She had her career high of 12 points against Southern Miss on Saturday. 
And some sad news tonight. Former Louisville star Lenny Lyles has died at the age of 75. Lyles, who attended Central High School, was one of the first African Americans to play football for the Cardinals. He scored a record 42 touchdowns and was known as the fastest man in football. Lyles also had a successful 12-year career in the NFL. Stay with us. More LAXDT News right after this. We'll see you again at 7 on Evening Edition. For the latest news, sports, and your storm tracker forecast, log on to LAX18.com. Coverage you can count on.